we've taken a look at techniques for constraining simple objects. Let's go ahead and look into something more complex. The scene is animating with props C start. All right, a sword animation can be very complicated to set up. What do we do in this case? Is it going to be better to constrain the sword to the hand? Or again, we're asking ourselves the same question. Now, in this case, depending on what you're going to do with the sword, how you animate the sword, I find that in most cases, you'll probably want to constrain your character's hand to the sword. If there's going to be any contact involved, that's exactly what you want to do. You want to have full control over that because, again, there's a lot of complexity in a sword animation. You want to make sure you get your arcs down. You want to make sure that everything is fluid. And for that reason, it's exactly why you'd want to have full control over the sword's animation. You don't want it to be controlled by the hand. If you're just doing a few swipes, well, then maybe the reverse is true. But more often than not, you're going to want to have that hand connected to the sword. So that's what we're going to explore in, in this lesson. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'll just quickly show you the setup. We just have the the sword parent and scale constraint to this, this sword control. Now what I'd like to do is actually have a an auxiliary control just so that when we animate the sword it's not rigid, the, the motion's more fluid. So by adding a secondary con control just for rotation, we can animate follow through a lot easier in that sword as the character swings it around. So we can go ahead and create that first. Let's head over to create polygon primitives. We can make a platonic solid. Go into the inputs. I'll go ahead and set this to octahedron. From there I'll go ahead and move that up and over. Scale this out. And then we can go ahead and draw a curve from this object. So I'll go to create. CV curve tool. Have it set to linear. By default it's not so you'll want to go ahead and switch that. Holding down the V key we could just go ahead and snap out our CVs until they outline this object. Okay, I think that's going to be good enough. So from here, we'll want to delete history on the curve. Edit delete by type history. We can select the, the uh, polygonal object and delete it. All right, so we have this auxiliary control. Let's go ahead and center its pivot, modify center pivot. And now to center this to our sword control, a quick way to do that is to use a point constraint. And then we'll remove the point constraint after it's been repositioned. So select the sword control, select the curve, head over to constrain, point. All right, from there we can head over to the outliner. And we'll want to go ahead and remove that point constraint. Curve selected. Maybe scale it down just a little bit more. It's not so large. And then we can freeze transformations on that object, clean it up. We're just going to be rotating on this, so we'll want to clean up our channels afterwards. But let's go ahead and rename this. That's going to be CC underscore sword auxiliary. Zero 01. Now the constraint is tied to the sword mesh. We'll want to make sure that the constraint is not going to this primary sword control, sword control, but to this secondary control. And then we'll have the secondary control parented to the main control. So I'll go ahead and unreference the assets layer, can select the sword mesh, and we'll get rid of its parent constraint. From there, selecting our secondary control, we'll select the sword mesh. Head over to constrain, parent constraint. And now we can go ahead and take the secondary control and parent it to the primary. 
All right, so as we move the primary around, still have full control over everything, the secondary control. And again, we're just going to use this for rotating the sword. So from here, we can go ahead and lock the translate, scale, and visibility attributes. I'll right click and choose lock and hide selected to clean that up. All right, I'll minimize the outliner. What we also want to do is go ahead and add this to our character set. So I'll go ahead and activate the CS Girl character set. From there, we'll go ahead and select the sword channels character, add the character set, go to the secondary control, highlight the attributes, and press the G key. Okay. Going back to the outliner, let's also have the sword underneath our character node just to organize things. So the sword control, being that it is a control, we'll have it under the control objects group. And we discuss how to build this type of grouping structure and our character rigging for a production course. But I'm going to go ahead and take the sword and parent it under control objects. As far as the mesh, sword mesh, we can always have that uh, parented under extra nodes. So I'll go ahead and expand that. We'll want to have that under extra to show. So that kind of clean things up more for us. Okay, so let's go ahead and discuss constraining now. So we're going to want to constrain to the primary sword control. And then the workflow is when we go ahead and animate this secondary control, we can go ahead and also add some secondary transformations to the hand as well. And the main idea behind this control is, again, as the character swipes, you're going to want more pull, more drag from that sword. So you can use the secondary control, rotating that back just a little bit more to add more flexibility to the animation. So you may not even need to add any secondary to the hand after the fact, but it also depends on how much you're rotating this. All right, so from here. We can now go ahead and work on constraining our arm controls. So we need groups above these. We don't want to uh, animate or add our constraints on top of these, especially because they already have connections going to our character set. So starting with the left side, you can go ahead and create a group. That's going to be group followed by dash N. We'll label this GRP CNS underscore CC underscore L arm IK01. All right, there's our group. Pivot is centered. Great. You can go ahead and go to the right arm control, select that, hit the up arrow to get right back to that command, and switch the L to an R and run the command. All right, let's check things out in the outliner. Okay, I'll go ahead and hit F. There are our groups. So from here, what we'd want to do, again, is reposition the hand so it's going to lie right on the sword. So when we blend back and forth, the hand will go to the spot it needs to be on on the sword. So I'll go ahead and select the right hand. And we want to select the group, not the actual hand, but the, the group. And move that over. Go ahead and rotate it in the y-axis about 90 degrees and our x-axis negative 90 okay and we're just roughly positioning this to kind of tweak the position even further we'd want to go to the actual control object itself but this is just so that the hand will lie on the sword so I'll go back to that right group and go ahead and move that over a bit more. Okay, great. So from here, we can go ahead and take care of the left side. I'll select that group, move that over. Rotate it out, negative 90 in the y-axis. And then the x-axis, that's going to be negative 90 as well. Okay, so we could just move that down. Make sure it's a little bit higher than the right hand.
Okay. That should be good. Now we're ready to work on constraining. So we select our main sword control. We go ahead and control click, let's say the left side, we could start with that. And we'll add a parent constraint with maintain offset. We'll do the same for the, the right hand. So again, select the main sword control, go ahead and control click the group constraint. So now notice as we control the sword, we're going to control the hands as well. All right, so now that that's done, what we're going to want to do is set up a switch to turn that weight on and off. So going to both groups, you can go ahead and press Shift W, Shift E, so we can get to the blend parent attribute. From there, we want to go to the animatable controls. So we'll select not the groups, but their control objects. Head over to modify, add attribute. Give it a category name that's going to be driver, displayable, choose add. And that's going to be follow sword for the animatable parameter. We'll give it a minimum of zero, maximum of one. Again, we want to blend between this weight, so we'll use a, a float data type. We choose OK. All right, let's go ahead and head over to the connection editor. Selecting the right side, we could start with it. We want to go to the group, load that up on the right side, go to the control curve, add that to the left side, connect follow sword to blend weight. Let's take care of the left side, select the control, load that on the output side, the left, select its group, load that on the right, and do our connections. All right, so it's set to zero right now, so we should have no control yet, so we can move this sword around. But notice this, we move this down, we go to our animatable control, and as we blend that, it's going to go right to the position it needs to be in. Same thing goes with the left hand. Great. All right, so here's the problem. Let's go ahead and set these to zero. Right now, our arm controls are set to zero, as we could see. So what's going to happen if we need to bring the character back to T-Pose? Well, we can't. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just joking. We always can. All right. What we need to do is go ahead and select the controls. I'll select both. The up arrow. Whoop. I'll grab both controls here. Hit the up arrow to get to their groups. And what we now want to do is zero out the groups. That's going to bring their, the character's arms back to T-pose. And then we want to set a key. Shift W and Shift E. I like to do this on frame zero. I like to use that as the t-pose frame in case we need to go back and make any changes to our rig right now it's on frame one but you kind of get the idea so you just simply go ahead and head over to frame zero and set your keys on that frame again shift w shift d all right so what does that mean does that mean that the arms will not go back to the sword if we were to go to the follow sword let's go ahead and test this out i'll select both arm controls go to follow sword and notice they go right back to the position they need to be in all right, great. So you can see this is kind of linear, how the hands are positioned on the sword. So again, you'd want to go to the actual controls and fine tune the position of the hands from here. And curling in the fingers and such. All right, so we've learned how to rig the hands to be controlled by the sword. Again, this would be uh, ideal in this case if you're uh, working on, let's say, uh, a sword fight between another character and in that case, you'd want full control over that sword so you can have the sword, let's say, stop when it needs to on contact and, and do all sorts of uh, fun things like that. All right, I'll go ahead and take the sword, zero that out, and bring it back to its default. Another thing you'd want to check for is arcs as you do your sword animation. And to do that, we could add a point right at the tip of the sword that we can then use motion trails for. So to do this... Let's go ahead and take care of this uh, to finish up our lesson here. And I'd like to also cover just one more thing before we finish up. Let's go ahead and make this point. I'll just make a locator. We can go ahead and have this position right at the sword by using our point constraint trick. I'll actually just move this up and go to the local scale, increase that so it's 
it'll be easier to see. We'll select our sword control, select the locator, do a point constraint. Going to our outliner, we'll want to take the point constraint and delete it. All right, I'll take the locator and we'll want it to be right at the tip of the sword. This is the best way to check for arcs in sword animations. Okay, once there, we can have this now parented to the sword. Could always parent it to the mesh or parent it to the secondary control. So I'll press the P key. You don't want to want it parented to the primary control in case you add any extra offsets to that secondary object. All right, from there I'll go ahead and rename this. That's going to be loc arc underscore sword zero one. All right, from there we'd want to create a an attribute on the sword itself. I'll go to modify add attribute. We can call this arcs, make it displayable, choose add, and then for the switch we can just call this arc check. Make it a boolean, choose OK. So right now it's off, let's head over to the connection editor. Alright, so with the sword control selected we'll want that loaded up on the left side, the locator loaded up on the right side, and simply go ahead and connect the arc check into the visibility. So right now it should be off. Great. Oh, I need to check my arcs. Well, let's go to the sword control. Go to arc check. Put in a value of 1. There we have it. Alright, so lastly, what I just wanted to cover is making sure we avoid any cyclic errors. That's when we have a loop of cycles or connections. And to do this, we wouldn't want to take this sword and constrain it to the hand. That may sound nice. Let's say if you wanted to at times control the sword by the hand. But in Maya, to do this, it would be more complicated. And you can't really avoid that cyclic error uh, with it. Uh, th well, there are ways around it, I, I should say. I uh, shouldn't say you, you can't do it, but it is very complicated uh, to do. They have um, uh, plugins out there that will... Uh, take care of that for you but uh, again trying to do this in, in Maya uh, using these tools that we've covered uh, you couldn't avoid that cyclic error and with that if we try to do something like that we notice that one of the connections would break and we can we can possibly even break our entire rig if we don't do this right so if you are constraining your hand to the object don't constrain that object back to the hand you're going to run into that cyclic error. So uh, with that said, again, we've covered uh, a good workflow for connecting a, a sword to our control rig so that we can get the animations that we, we need. So we covered a lot of uh, cool tools and, and, and techniques to make that happen.